Is it going? See, I had a poor. Are we on? We're live. We're live on Facebook. Congratulations, this is your 10th broadcast on Famous. Look at that. So, uh, just leave it to uh, sort of get going. We've got a couple of people watching. Look at, look at that. Ainsley, how are you? Nico, how are you, brother? Andrew, long time no see, man. So, uh, Pixie, how are you, brother? So, uh, oh, she's all go. Adam, how are you, mate? Long time no see. Chucky, how are you, brother? Sean, how are you, man? This thing's going off. So, uh, Ty, how are you, mate? We need to catch up. Dawson, how are you, brother? Hey, uh, look, look, guys, I, I, I've, um, obviously, I, I've done a couple of videos um, earlier. Uh, beautiful Top Sea, Southland Present, you know. All the North Islanders won't like that, but you've got to love where you come from, eh? You come from the Deep South, so uh, you've got to, uh, you got to uh, support that and uh, be proud of where you come from. Yeah, the, the, I see Tim there, he's from Auckland, he probably doesn't like the Southland Top so much. <laughs> so, uh, hey look guys, I, I uh, yeah, that's good Tig. Tamadi, how are you brother? Man, Daniel, long time no see. Man, there's a lot of people getting on here, so uh, they want to listen to my bald melon tonight, so that's crazy. Amanda, how are you? Hey, look, look, guys. I um, obviously I've done a couple of videos uh, earlier today, um, sort of building up to this particular video. Um, you know, this video is not about my or building me up. Um, it's not about um, you know, you know, putting out there what I've what I've done to benefit me. I I, I wanted to do this because I I want to help other people and I want other people to believe in themselves. Um, you know, over the years, there's been a lot of struggles and, and uh, stuff in my life from a whole range of different things, and, and I've managed to overcome a lot of those things. Look, I still haven't arrived, but I'm, I'm on the way um, to the top. Um, you know, I don't think we we I don't think we ever arrive. Um, it's, it's a journey that is, is continuing. We continue to grow. Um, you know, we choose um, man. 27 people watching, this is probably the biggest uh, audience I've ever had, so uh, it's quite, uh, I'm sitting here in Maramarua, in uh, our, our place here, we've got a lifestyle block out here, but it's about 35 minutes from Manukau, and uh, just sitting here out in the country, it's amazing, you can talk to a whole heap of people over a, a video, and it's like you're standing up and uh, speaking in front of a, a, a group at a, a function or whatever, so it's pretty cool, so look, what I want to do with, with um, Everyone here tonight is just really um, go back to the basics where I've sort of come from, um, and, and just talk about the journey, some of the ups and downs, some of the struggles that I've had to to get through. Cheers, Daniel. And uh, you know it's quite cool. I, I did a video earlier, and a couple of people have already uh, given me a call. Well, quite a few people have, and, and said, you know, it's awesome to see you out there putting yourself out. So I'm just going to try and be. Well, I'm just going to be myself. I can't be anything more. My life's been my my life. I, I I've had an awesome, awesome life. It's been, um, as I say, a few ups and downs, but you know, it's it's only getting better by the day. And and, and the reason for for those of you that are first joining this video, um, yeah, Cameron Stewart's my name. But the reason why I'm doing this is. I, I I was finding myself. I, I've I've made a lot of money over the last few years through my property stuff, um, and I, I found myself at a crossroads where I was looking for for the next thing, the next um, something that I could do con to contribute to the world, to other people out there. And and I I come across a, a guy called Lee Bundy over there in Australia. I've watched several of his videos. Um, watched a lot of the guys in his beast mode over there um, and I started to really like the message that they were portraying um, what they were trying to get across to the world and um, Colvin how are you mate and uh, it's uh, you know there's a lot of fr uh, old friends coming up on the feed here so that's that's pretty cool so just talk to you guys like it, as it is most of you guys have known me my <laughs> a, a long time so you know that know the background 
But, you know, I come from uh, Invercargill, the bottom of the South Island. Uh, I lived in a little place called Wallace Town, which was really cool growing up down there. And uh, went to uh, a school called Central Southland College in Winton. Um, I never actually got accepted to any other schools in, uh, in Invercargill itself because I was a, a bit of a troubled kid. They reckon I had ADD. See, mum's on there now. And uh, so I, I sort of, from a young age, I was branded as a, or I felt branded, and I, well, I was branded as a, as a bit of a shit stirrer. Um, and, you know, so it was never easy for me. School was never easy for me. My, my concentration was terrible. I was hyperactive. Um, I was always, you know, getting into mischief, playing up. But, you know, mum and dad um, brought me up well to, to, to have a work ethic to, and I, you know, it was really crazy. I, I um, at a very young age, I, 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 I happened to meet a mum, uh, mum's pastor at a church, a guy called Ross Davies, um, when I was in my early um, teenage years, when I was sort of a bit mixed up and didn't really know what I was doing. He sort of took me under his wing. And, and that was my first sort of mentor in life. Um, he used to, you know, help me and and uh, used to, to work with me and he used to teach me all the stuff on his farm. He had a wee stud farm and I used to get on there and work with the sheep and he would go away preaching and stuff to places like India and uh, represent Southland. And he used to go to places like India and stuff preaching. So he'd leave me, I was like a kid, you know, like 10, 11 years old and he'd give me his ute, his tractor and I'd drive it up and down the road looking after the uh, um, his, his place while he was away so I got given some responsibility at a very young age from um, Quinnan, how are you mate, long time no see bro and uh, you know it, it was crazy, it, someone had some belief in me at that at very young age that, to, to put me in, in a level of trust like that so, you know, fast forward from there, we went on to Central Southland College and uh, it was a really, um, really different going out there because I'd obviously grown up in the Wallace Town hard as Tamadi says there, Quinn is from Wallace Town too, so I grew up out there and we're all pretty tight knit group out there and uh, obviously I never got accepted to the, the schools in town so I headed out to Central Southland College and made a whole bunch of new friends out there which was really cool and, um, you know, it was awesome, you know, got out there, got amongst all the... Uh, the, all the all the country boys out there, all the boys had farms. They're all off farms out there, and it really got the uh, the burning desire for me that the dreams always be to get been to get a farm, and uh, so that sort of triggered the farm. I, I suppose I was a little bit jealous by a lot of the guys I went to school with. They all had these big farms and nice cars, all the stuff, and I had nothing. And uh, you know, it was um, it, it, it was really motivating. <laughs> to be fair, I used to go out there and we'd cruise around in the car. Shirley, that's uh, Ross's uh, beautiful wife there. She, you know, I was just saying, Shirley, um, Ross was one of my first mentors in life. Um, give the heads up to him. I know he's not well right now, but uh, it's amazing. All these people come along um, in your life at, at periods of time when you need them. And uh, it's uh, it's just crazy what, fast forwarding back to the, the, the high score. I'm a little bit over the place. Um, obviously speaking in front of this many people on a, on a live feed is not usually what I do. But just fast forwarding up through to high school, had a really good time out there playing up with the boys out there. Um, and then uh, actually uh, a bit of a, a, a situation happened. We, uh, we lost a really good friend of ours at the time, um, a guy called Brad, and uh, he got electrocuted at school. And and uh, it was really quite a tough time for, for, for a lot of us young guys. And, and for, for me at 15 years old, I think that was probably my first... Um, bout of getting depression, getting uh, getting down and out, and I'd, I I remember um, one of the uh, the uh, social workers or whatever at school said that she was worried about me at that point in time to mum and all this, and I I got into this dark place in my mind. I didn't know what it was, but I knew I come out of it eventually. And left school, went and got on a worked on a farm, worked down at uh, Waitoru Farms down there in uh, Wallace Town. It was uh, you know really cool. I actually got fired from that job. Clinton McConchie was my boss. Hopefully he's not watching this video, but you know he, uh, he I actually got fired from my first job because I was a radic. I was hypo. I was doing donuts on the four wheeler, um, doing all this sort of stuff, just being just being crazy. And uh, so I actually lost that job and um, ended up going out to. Um, work for a builder, did a bit of builders labouring and uh, a whole lot of shearing, crutching and stuff like that in between and uh, ended up uh, at uh, Mosbin up there with a guy called Simon 
And uh, I'm live, live brother, I'm live. So uh, how are you, Quinnan? And um, so I ended up in Mosbin, and uh, you know, throughout all this time in my early stages of life, um, from the Central Pirates days, Wright's Bush, um, a lot of binge drinking culture, which was a hell of a good time. Um, you know, just partied hard, um, got on fights, played up like a second hand lawnmower. It was just how we rolled down there, and it was awesome. You know, it was a, it was a cool way to, to to grow up, but uh, certainly made a lot of mistakes and, you know, a few, few calls with the police and all this sorts of crazy stuff. But I ended up at Mosbin. Um, anyway, I, the, the, the drinking and the fighting and all that stuff got out of control up there. Got barred from the Mosbin pub. My boss come to me and said, look, you need to get out of here. And he actually said to me, Simon was his name, good guy. He said, you need to get out of here. And, he, and I actually um, pretty much, I was, I was growing weed. <laughs> I was doing all sorts of crazy stuff, you know, and uh, it was just, I was doing that stuff because I, I didn't know any other way, you know, and uh, I was a little bit lost, I was just drinking heavily, um, I always had a dream though, all this different stuff I'd done, I started working on the farms, um, I started getting around these other guys, I started seeing my boss Simon driving around in his truck and his Hilux and started thinking, this guy's just living the dream, man, you know, how am I going to do that? So I ended up in Kalgoorlie, Western Australia, of all places. So that was next level is, is in the way of rough. Um, so I went over there when I was about 18 or 19 years old. Um, went over there drillers off siding, and uh, it was it was it was crazy. You know, going from Invercargill straight into Kalgoorlie. Back in those days, there was no restriction in the pub. It was pretty hardcore. You know, like uh, we used to drink these things called attitude adjusters and just get loose. It was just crazy, all straight spirits and. Uh, you know, it was just it was just Fight Club. It was just it was just crazy. And uh, back in those days, I wasn't uh, into personal development. I was mixed up. I was, uh, you know, about probably two or three years in into the into the drilling game. We started getting into the into the drugs. Started smashing down pills, all this sort of stuff. And the reason why I say all this stuff is, you know, GG, you've been there, brother. And uh, you know, the reason why I'm saying this stuff is. It's all part of the story, and look, it's not like I'm almighty, some almighty guy. I've I've just gone out there and had a go. I'm talking about these ups and downs and the things that are, um, the the trials and things I've had to get over. Um, you know, I've had to get over this stuff so I could move forward, and none of that's ever been easy. You know, and you know I won't get onto that side of it yet, but. You know, people think life's going to be easy, and you, you, all of a sudden you just become successful. That's not how it works. No one ever sees you when you're going through the grind, when you're crying in people's driveway, when people are telling you to piss off their property, when you're a stock agent, all this stuff, you know. They don't see that side. You, they only see you now when you're out there and, and you're, you're on magazines and all this sort of carry-on. So this is why I'm going through this stage. But going back to Kalgoorlie, I, I did that, was off-siding there, um, ended up... Uh, Oh, I can't remember how many years it was in, probably three or four years in, into Kalgoorlie, um, into the drilling game. I had a uh, really bad accident and um, really ch completely changed my life. Uh, I, I had a major back injury. Um, I was in hospital for, in and out of hospital for a year and I got really, really sick. I was down to about, you know, 70 kilos at one point. I had, a, um, it's a long story, but, you know, I, I, I hit rock bottom. I was suicidal. I just wanted to, you know, I, the, the thing was, I was always there in the city, all my mates were flying in and out, and I was just back there, and when they'd come in, I'd get on the booze with them and get on it, and then I'd go back to my apartment and just sit there, and I was just alone, and I just, just, I just, I just, everything I'd ever known, all the rugby, all the, all of the being a hero in the pub, being the guy that, that was strong and outgoing, all got taken away from me, and that wasn't easy, man, because, you, you, you know, yeah, you, you, when you've had an identity, and my identity at, at, at that time was like, you know, if I went to the pub and one of the boys got into a fight, I'd be the first guy straight in there. I was just ego-driven, just full of testosterone, just an idiot, you know, just a young idiot. And, uh, you know, I can't filter this story. This is just the way it is. And I uh, had the accident, and, uh, you know, obviously all the guys, you know, they're all, they're all there for me. They're all awesome bunch of guys over there in Perth. But I was alone, you know, I had a, I ended up hooking up with a, a, a girl at the time, uh, Amelia, lovely girl, and, and she was actually my lifesaver through that period of time over there, uh, through that stage of my life, um, which was, you know, I was pretty down and out. But anyway, we went into a whole, um, fast forwarding from there, 
en ended up going into a uh, a court battle, um, into a whole workers' compensation thing over there. Um, I just mentally was screwing me, and uh, I uh, ended up settling out of court for about 300k. Uh, walked away from a, a, a lot bigger payout. Um, I just couldn't handle it mentally anymore. It was just killing me. Uh, people. You know, people think that you because you you go and get a payout, uh, <laughs> that things all good. That's not how it works out. You know, uh, you know, I still had my my left leg still numb to this day. I've still got major back pain. Um, had my um, spine fused. Um, so the injuries never left me. Um, but what that whole situation did is it put me completely into a situation that was uncomfortable. I like I remember trying to do work experience over there, and I remember you know they're trying me to get me to do all these different things and you know uh, trying to get me to work in bars or hospitality all this stuff and you know back in those days I didn't even have the belief in myself that I could go and stand behind a bar. I was this big hero on the outside, but then under, under underneath all that I was just just a little girl, you know, and I was just had so much anger, so much pain inside that. Um, you know, when I went out there and they got me to go and do this work, you know, I just, like, I, I was doing this work um, experience. I ended up dragging some guy over the bar and just about clipping around the ear, you know. Um, I just couldn't handle it. I, I, I Mentally, I was just, I was doped up. I was pretty much addicted to morphine, tramadol, um, Valium, you know. And then outside of all that, all the recreational drugs and heavy drinking that we were doing, it was just mentally, I was just a, men I was just a wreck. And, you know, the reason why I say this stuff is, look, I'm no great, great guy, but one thing, I, one thing I can say about myself is I'm an overcomer. And when you're an overcomer, you can, you can then influence and help other people overcome, and that's why I'm doing this video. You see, at that point in my life, I thought I, 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 wanted, to, I wanted to end it. You know, we, I tried on a couple of occasions to, to eat a heap of tablets and try and finish it. You, you know, I've had nine lives. My mum and dad will tell you, my friends will tell you. God, the amount of accidents and all the stuff I've had, I've meant to be here, and this is why I'm pushing this stuff out now, is because I've gone through the pain, I've gone through the accidents, I've gone through all this shit, and the reason why I, I wanted to get involved in, 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 and do these videos is so I can benefit someone else, because life's not easy, you know, and it, it's going to be hard, you know, there's going to be struggles, but if you're not pushing through the fear, you're never moving forward, but going back to the story, I end up getting paid out from... Uh, Australia about 300 grand, so I bought two houses in the Vicargo with that money. I never, I had my own money saved up as well, so I bought a, a, a new ute, and uh, I bought two houses in Vicargo, and uh, I just, I lived off the rent there for, for a little while, and I had to try and find myself, you know, I was in a relationship store at that point in time, and I remember trying to go for jobs, and uh, people just telling me that I was, uh, you know, I was just getting rejected, you know, like, I uh, no one would employ me because I had a back injury. So I, I, everything I had ever known was taken away from me. I ended up working on a farm down there on the biggest sheep milking farm in the southern hemisphere, milking sheep, getting up at three in, three in the morning, going out there and, and milking sheep, rounding up the sheep and milking these bloody sheep, you know. It's just crazy, you know. I remember sitting down and uh, I, I got a job. I was doing some drainage and, and this and that, and this is going on to the next part of the story. Um, but... When I got back to Invercargill, I just sat, you know, I just, I was lost. You know, it was awesome to get back down around family. Um, you know, and all of that time we had some family issues with dad's sickness, all this sort of stuff. And life was tough. And, uh, you know, anyway, I, I decided I got this job, driving diggers. And anyway, I ended up having to uh, throw that in my, uh, my back. Just, I just couldn't handle it, you know. And these guys took the piss out of me. I just wanted to kill them. It was just it just made me so angry. Every, you know, I, I, my my inside me there was just this burn to go and do something, and, and and no one would give me a chance. You know, and if someone's not out there giving you a chance, you need to step up and go and do something for yourself. You know, but going back to that time, I, I remember I was working uh, in, in this drain in Winton, just down from the bakery there for you guys who live down in Winton, and I, I was sitting there. I remember sitting there and I was watching a couple of my mates every now and then would drive past, Scotty Gibson Smith and Ryan Shaw would drive past and they were livestock agents. And I remember them driving past and I remember them thinking, those, those pricks just buddy talk on the phone all day, going around looking at cows and shit. So I thought, 
stuff this. I'm going to be a livestock agent. You know, all I'd ever done is work on a couple of farms when I was a young when I was younger. I was definitely no stock expert, but I managed to talk my way into that. And uh, I actually how I become a livestock agent. I emailed all the livestock companies in New Zealand straight out. Just I emailed all the the people, Wrightsons, um, Elders, and and some other one. I got offered a job and uh, or a position in South Otago with Wrightsons, and I turned that down. And uh, decided to go to Pew Pew of all places on straight commission, pretty much on a retainer in Pew Pew in the King Country. And uh, man, that was a, that was an awakening. So I moved everything from Inver Invercargill, uh, moved poor Amelia up to uh, to the North Island, away from her family and all that sort of stuff, and got to Pew Pew, where I had another mentor, Carl White, coming to the scene. Um, old Carl White down there in, in Tikwiti. And uh, I'd never been in sales, never done anything like that. Um, you know, I remember the day, turned up there and the elders back in those days, you had to wear a salmon pink shirt. And I thought, crap, man, I'm not wearing a, you know, like, it was humiliating just wearing a salmon pink shirt. I couldn't believe it. Going up to, it's, it's bad enough going up a farmer's driver and asking him if you can get some business and then you're going up there with a pink shirt on. It's just crazy, you know. And so I had to wear this pink shirt and he goes to me, Boy, you, the only way you're going to get anywhere is you just got to canvas the hell out of it. So canvassing means going and knocking on doors. So for literally 18 months, 12 to 18 months, I just hard out all through the King Country, driving up driveways, knocking on doors, knocking on doors. Hi, my name's Cameron Shute. I'm the new outers agent in the area. Look, I'm looking to um, I'm looking to um, source some business, da-da-da. And I remember the... Going back to the beginning of that, I remember I pulled up this driveway, this guy, this guy Mike, pulled up his driveway and he just abused the hell out of me because I was an elders agent. And I remember thinking to myself, I just want to spear tackle this guy, you know. Um, and I actually went home that day and I, I, I went home that day and I thought, God, is this worth it? You know, and it was, um, that was just one guy. It was the first driver I ever pulled up and I got that joker. So I pulled up my sleeves, I had a couple of beers, pulled up my sleeves and went back out again. And, um, you know... It's crazy because I did that for that 18 months, whatever it was, um, down there in the King Country. Ended up over in, in the Western Bays, uh, Taupo, um, over there. And I, I, I just got frustrated. I, I started to, I just got annoyed. I was, I, was, I, was, I was irritated. I just, I wasn't happy. I was, I was doing this stuff I didn't want to do. I, I was adding no value to anyone. I was just, just being kicked around like, like hell from all these cockies, and, and I knew I was better than all them, and that was, that was my thinking. I think I'm wasting my time with these guys. So I come back from that, um, come back from uh, work one day, and this is fast forwarding, there's a whole lot of stuff in between. Actually, just rewinding back a little bit, um, pretty major turning point uh, in my life. I, I, I was actually really, I really wasn't happy in Pew Pew. I, I, I um, I just didn't seem to be getting anywhere, and I, 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 I was starting to get that depression coming back, the suicidal thoughts. I was starting to get down and out, and I was just, I was just frustrated. And I went down to uh, Fiordland for a raw trip, for a hunting trip, and uh, you know, I, I just wasn't good, and, and you know, I was drinking too much, um, overweight, all this stuff, and uh, I, I had a pretty major ski down there. Uh, I fell in a in a river and uh, went off a waterfall and, uh, and pretty much drowned. I don't know how I survived that. It was pretty crazy. Yeah, the boy, some of the boys that were in there with me were there, and it was a pretty major shock. I lost all my gear. I, 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 I thought I was going to die. You know, I thought I'd, that was the end of it. And uh, I come out of there, come up back up to Pew Pew, and, and uh, Really made some serious decisions here. I, I started to really start to think what else is out there. I, I had a, another call, close call with death, and I started to think, man, you know, like what's the next step here? This is this is bullshit, you know. This is this is no good. Um, so I started searching. I I, I, I remember going down to Masterton, uh, for a for a, an elders work function or whatever it was. And I remember walking at lunchtime. I walked through the. Uh, through the uh, paper plus or whatever it was, and and there was a book there on the shelf that said the four hour work week, um, and uh, I picked that book up. Guy by Tim uh, Tim Fer Ferris wrote that book, and I picked that book up and I started having to read it. I just didn't understand anything about it. Like I, I wasn't a business guy, I wasn't a I wasn't sharp. I couldn't communicate. I didn't know anything. I didn't even know how to use it. I didn't even know if I had a computer. 
Uh, didn't know how to do any of this stuff. But I read this book, The 4-Hour Workweek, and it got me thinking. I started thinking, this guy's only working four hours a week. What the hell is this guy doing? Anyway, I sort of shelved that book. I didn't understand it because it was all about this internet stuff, and I thought, oh, I can't do that. But I come back from work one day, uh, out, and I just had a prick of a day, and I thought, oh, man, I've got to, I've got to do something here. And I got on. I started Googling multi-millionaires. Who can I, like, millionaire mentors? So I started Googling all these mentors, all this stuff. This isn't, I think this must have been about 2009, 2010. And uh, anyway, I, I, I come across this course, a, a guy called Sean Wood, actually, uh, who runs a company called Property Tutors. Um, never went to a seminar, never did anything like that. But I, I ended up uh, paying for this course. Steve Stark, who knows me, um, he, he answered the call. And I, I pretty much just rang up, asked about it, and then just... I think I paid for it from a credit card. I think I got a credit card to pay for it. I can't remember how I did it. I borrowed the money. Um, and I paid for this course, which was 25 grand. Or well, 20 grand or whatever. I can't remember exactly what it was at the time. But it was a, it was a fair bit of dough. Uh, I didn't have the money. Um, I remember um, old uh, old Carl, if you're watching. Yeah, I remember Carl saying to me, you won't make any money in property at the time. The market was um, deflated. Um, anyway, I started doing my livestock business flat out, doing the livestock business, and then driving up to Auckland from Taupo um, every week, um, every every Tuesday or Thursday. We can't remember what day it was, but I started going up and doing this course, and uh, I started getting around Sean, who's a multi-millionaire, really successful guy in his own right. Uh, you know, I started to get the dream. I started to get, I started to get the feeling of the lifestyle, what can be created. Um, and I started to, um, I started to, I plugged into him hard. When I was in that course, I hounded him, I hounded him, I hounded him. I knew I needed to learn from him. And uh, so he was my, uh, about my third mentor I've had in life. Um, and, you know, so he taught me everything I knew from a property perspective in South Auckland. Me and him clashed a little bit, um, similar personalities. Um, and uh, so I left the course and uh, moved on. Pog, how are you, brother? And uh, so that sort of stemmed my career into the property and stuff. And and look, I, I remember the first property I ever did, I uh, just about bloody ran out of, well, I ran out of money. I, my good mate James Kirkland lent me five grand um, to pay for that renovation. I, I can't remember what the profit was, but I, I know it was probably 30, 40, 50 grand or something like that um, that I made on that first deal. So I decided I was uh, going to leave uh, the livestock. And, I, and go property full time. So I just jumped in, full full feet, like just full steam ahead. Just jump straight into it. Like everyone thought I was mad. You know, no one understood it. It's, see, you got to understand, guys. It's not about what it is that you do. It's about where you want to go. If you don't understand what it is that you want, find out what it is that you want. Then go and, and, and go and find people that can get you to that goal. See, most people are moping through life. And uh, by the way. Look, my brother works a job full time. A lot of people I know are well educated, and the, you know my cousin's a doctor. So we need those people in the educated field too. But we don't all have to be sheep. We don't all have to conform. We can we can make our own path in life. We don't have to be told by someone else. And that's where I I, I stepped out and did this property stuff. And oh, anyway, a whole lot of stuff happened. It, we I've done a heap of transactions over the last last few years. Of, you know, getting up to a couple hundred. Involved in a couple of hundred transactions now um, since about 2009, 2010. Um, and it's just been a crazy, crazy ride. But this is going on to the next part of the story. Um, to Leading into why I'm getting into this video stuff and that now is... I was making a lot of money, making good money doing what I was doing. I, um, I was in a business partnership with, a, with another guy at the time. That sort of fell apart. And I was, you know, so we, we were making good money, we're having a good time, all the rest of it, bought new motorbikes, rode around New Zealand, all this sort of stuff, and, uh, you know, anyway, I, we went our separate ways, and and uh, I just kept carried on doing what I was doing, just went hard, just hard out property, 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 just making making really good money, um, just sold out, sold out to, just sold out to spend my whole time working, like seven days a week, 20 hours a day, like had houses getting renovated all over the place, I was, you know, I was getting home, I just was doing all the stuff in the office, um, I had no, I was doing this all myself, I, you know, I had, uh, you know, 
was a nice bike grant. Sold that now, just about killed myself on that too. So, uh, um, you know, I was doing all this work and I was making good money, but I, but I was getting into a lot of habits. I was starting to drink extremely heavy. You know, like I started to drink during the day. I started to, uh, you know, I, I started to um, get on the cocaine. I, I, I relapsed back into a drug habit. I started to get back on the coke. I started to do all the stuff. You know, mum's going to be horrified. She, she knows my past anyway, but I started getting back into a rut. I started getting back into that bad way of thinking. I started to, um, you know, go backwards mentally. Yeah, from the outside, I looked like this guy, and that's why, uh, you know, I was doing really well, but inside I was hurting. You know, I was hurting inside. And see, most people don't have the bo the balls or the guts to go out there and actually say this. For me to say this on social media, I'll get out, get a message out there and, um, G'day Douglas, how are you, mate? And, you know, it's not easy to go and put yourself out there like this. But I, the reason why I'm doing this is not only for me, it's to, it's to, be to benefit someone else. You know, it's to benefit someone else and help them realise that they can do whatever it is that they want to achieve. What, what I've achieved is nothing compared to what I'm going to achieve. This is only just a scratch on the scratch of what I've done. You know, we, you know, my belief system has changed. That's why I've got to this point. I've been going through a, a you know, the, over the last 12 months, I've done a, a lot of real major soul searching, started to really figure out what it is that I wanted. I, I've, I've been humming and hiring what direction. Um, just rewinding a little bit, I got involved in a network marketing business back in 2011 and that got me plugged in hard to a personal development program and it completely changed my life. Um, you know, I, I, I just think Mark Thomas, who's a really good friend of mine, now he was a stranger, he had the guts to put his hand out and say, what's your name, what are you wanting to achieve? No one ever actually had asked me that question before. And I'll ask you guys that question, what is it that you want to achieve? Because no one actually really asked me that. See, everyone looks at, everyone's so busy doing what they're doing, but what are they doing? You need to focus on what it is that you want. You know? So we got, um, I got involved in that business. We've been developing that since 2011. We've got some really good success with what we're doing there. We've helped a lot of people, uh, I know personally, and also in other areas of their life. And it, it, it's, it's really made a massive difference um, to, my, to myself and and. What's happened is, because of all the books, because of all the association, a lot of my really good friends, Sarah Hardigan, Arn Meta, these guys, Don Ha, really successful people in life, multi-millionaires in their own right, you know, I, I associate with these guys and, and, and it lifts me to that next level. So if you want to get to that next level in life, you need to associate with those people that are going to get you there. I'm just like every other guy, especially coming from down south. I like to have a beer. I like to party. Conrad, you know I like to party. We've had a few parties over the years. You know, I'm just like the rest of the lads. You know, play rugby, ride motorbikes, be stupid, do all that stuff. But what is it that, um, you know, outside of all of that, that's just all really what, what value adding to the world doing that. And that's why I've got involved in these videos. And when I seen Lee Bundy doing that stuff over there with Team Meat Beast Mode, I really started to click with what the message, the message he was starting to portray. See, you don't have to conform. You don't have to be what someone wants you to be. You can, you, you have to be happy within yourself. That's why I've got to the point now where I'm happy to sit, sit on this thing and talk in front of. I don't know how many people this is going to reach, but it'd be a lot. You know. The reason why I can do this now is because I've got the self-belief. And the belief, belief has come in me because I've associated with people that have lifted me up. Over the years, people have pulled me down. People have said, you're not going to fail in that. What are you doing that for? You'll go broke doing that. You know, I've had uh, um, business things fall apart because of greed, because people are worried about the almighty dollar. See, for me, it comes from loyalty. What's in your heart? I tell you, a lot of my, my, my true mates, my really close friends, they're my mates no matter what. You know, as soon as someone starts bagging out what I'm doing because I'm going out in my life, I just cut them. You've got to cut the shit, guys. You've got to cut the crap out of your life. And, you know, just fast forwarding on to now into these videos and why I'm doing this is to help other people. I don't care about the money. Look, money's a byproduct of what true success is anyway. 
you know? If you, look, I know a lot of people in the property industry, they're making all this money, they're the big shots, driving around flash cars, all this stuff. Really, how happy are they? You know? Karen, you've known me look for a long time from the beginning, you know? You know, what is it that you want? You know, yeah, this is just crazy. I'm talking on a video to and hundreds of people, literally thousands of people online. Why have I got to the point that I can go and do this? I was just a kid from Invercargill. The guy getting done for assault, the guy getting in fights at the pub, being an idiot, being branded the, the, the pissed idiot, go to people's parties and get, get pissed up and then someone, you know, get in a fight and do something stupid. That, that's who I was. But I didn't want to be that person anymore. This is why I'm doing this video. This is why I'm doing these videos. You know, obviously, um, rewinding back, I haven't mentioned Emma, but Emma coming, uh, and when did you come into the scene, Emma? Four years ago. Four years ago, Emma come into the scene. I've been away uh, to Europe, come back from Europe. Barbara, how are you? You've known me for a while too. Um, come back from Europe, and, and Emma and I met, and uh, it was really out of it, because me and her are very, very similar personalities. Very high energy, very strong personalities. But she's literally changed my life. It's, given, it's taken my eyes off myself. Being able to, to actually, you know, we've got married at the beginning of the year. You know, I never thought I was going to be in a happy marriage. I never thought I was going to be to the point where I could influence other people around the world. You know, my goal is to fill Victorina with 10,000 plus people and go, I'm on, how are you, brother? You know? My goal is to influence people with thousands of people around the world because, see, I'm not, a, I'm not the, the, the biggest property investor out there. I'm not the biggest, have the biggest networking, network marketing business out there. I don't, um, none of those things, but I tell you, all those struggles, all those ups and downs that I went through have, has what made me get to the point today where I can go and do something like this. See, most people don't have the guts to be their true self. They're hiding behind a facade. They're all, oh, I'm big, big muscly guy at the gym. You know, if you say something to me, I'll punch you. I used to be that guy. You know, do you want to be that guy or do you want to be a real man? A real man is someone who actually gives a shit about other people and goes out of his way to help them. I do so much to help other people today. That was, you know, that that's what I, this is why I'm doing this video. So I can help other people. So I can help other people realize that they can be more than what they are. You know, there's no benefit in this financially for me to do this video. All I'm doing is opening myself up to a can of worms, to a bunch of naysayers that, that, that are going to to rip it out of me. You know, what I say to those guys, when are you going to step it up? You know, all the guys that have told me, yeah, this and that, blah, 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 over the years. You know, it's not about status. It's not about how much money you got. It comes down to who do you want to become in the process of your journey? Who do you want to help in your journey? You know, my mum comes from a strong Christian background. I've never really got into that that much, but you know, she's always told me that I could do any anything that I wanted to set my mind to. You know, and it's just crazy. You know, I, I all these years people told me you can do it, you can do it. I never had I never had faith in myself. I never had faith in myself. I didn't have belief in myself that I could go and do something better. You know. And each and every one of you on this earth is here for a reason. You know, my dad's sick in the hospital right now. He has, he's been there for a couple of months. And I know dad, you know, he's done the best that he could do. But I know that there's things that he didn't do. Don't leave things to the last minute. You know, I had a couple of guys ring me up tonight, you know. I'm glad that people are ringing me up and reaching out, you know. I'm glad that their people are doing that. Because... Understand this, life is not going to be easy. It's going to knock the living shit out of you. Some of you on this feed is going to... It, it, was that Corinne? You still in Auckland? Yeah, bro. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it's still here. Cheers, Cam. Yeah, no worries. So, you've got to understand, you, you can achieve anything that you want to achieve. This is only the beginning for me. Emma and I, this is... The reason why I'm putting this out is because... I, look... Financial success comes. Financial success comes when you believe in yourself enough that you can influence enough other people. When you change the world, when you go out there and actually make a difference. This stuff's been stewing up inside of me for years. For months I've been talking about this, Tima. 
you know, I, it just happened one guy, Lee Bundy over in Australia, I just happened to watch his videos and I connected. I seen someone else that was at my level. And I, I really loved the message that he was putting across. For all you guys out there, there's a lot of guys on this post that are making a lot of money. It don't matter how much money you make, man. How happy are you on the inside? If, you, if you, 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 you're so stressed that you're drinking every night, you're taking drugs, you're doing all that stuff to suppress what you actually really want, well, what's that going to achieve? I know, I've been there. You know, I was a high flock, you know, I was just living, living the high life. It was just crazy. You know, and I'm not going to go for, on for much longer here. This whole, um, I've got to get onto a Skype call with a guy soon. So, look, what I wanted to portray to you guys tonight is it's not about me. I'm just using my experiences. Tim, we've partied hard over the years. You know, I love all you guys. All, all the people that have been in my life all these years. All the people that have told me, you know, the, you know, Chucky Taylor, Mark Thomas, Craig and Anna Dean, Pog, Ben Mann, Mum, Dad, Michael Carl. All of those people have influenced me to, to be able to get to this point. Where I can get to this point where I can actually go out there and actually make a difference. You know, to put yourself out there on a video like this is not easy. But the more you push yourself through the fear, the more successful you will become. Push through the fear, the more success, successful you will become. You know, my cousin Paula, you know. So many of these people, you know, my granddad, he passed away at the beginning of the year. So many people have had an influence on my life. What is it that you want to do? Josh, you were there with me and Pew Pew, brother. You know. What is it that you want to do? Josh is going gun ho man. He's out there doing it. Man, it's awesome to see. You know, we used to sit down the Pew Pew pub, going down there, getting on the on, on the uh, booze and playing up like second-hand lawnmowers. It was awesome, you know. So each and every person that comes into your life comes into your life for a reason. You're watching this video for a reason. I watched that video the other day for a reason. I forked out money for, for coaching and mentoring, all these mentoring and all this stuff over the years for a reason. You know, and, and like Ricky says, when you wear a top like this, you can't go wrong. You know, so... Uh, Look, guys and girls, I just want you to, to, to understand this is not about lifting my ego. You know, one thing I had to do is I had to get rid of my ego. I'm ego-driven to the max. But ego will only get you so far. Sooner or later, you've got to get, get into your heart. You've got to actually understand who am I. Take all this facade away. What actually am I underneath all this? What is it that you want? You can all... You can all succeed. If you want to ask questions or anything like that, um, you've got questions about certain things, if you want to maybe progress forward or get put into touch with some people that can help you out, um, shout out. Um, it's uh, been awesome sort of talking to you. I don't want to go on for much longer. But just remember, whatever it is that you want to achieve, don't listen to people. There's a lot of people out there that are, are teaching that haven't done it. I'm just a straight shooter. I've made a lot of mistakes. I still make a lot of mistakes today. But you can achieve whatever it is that you want. But you need to associate with the right people. You need to cut the shit. You need to, you know, drinking. If you're a heavy drinker, cut it. If you're a smoker, cut it. Focus on your health. Focus on your wealth. Focus on your inside of, your, of yourself. Read books. Associate. Listen. And you will win. And we will see you at the top. So... That's it for me. I'll have some other videos coming up over the next few days talking about some different things and um, some different strategies and things like that. But to everyone there that's been part of my life over these years, I haven't arrived. I'm nowhere near arrived. This is just the beginning. We're about to step it up to the next level. Global domination, making a difference, filling coliseums around the world. Not to make money, to make a difference. So I'll see you at the top. And thanks for listening. Cheers.